The Hangar is the latest business to get a massive buff in GTA Online. That's right, after years and years of waiting, Rockstar has finally shown The Hangar some love. And now, after making GTA Online content for three years, I think it's the perfect time to finally explain how this business works. In this video, I'm going to tell you how and where to buy a Hangar, how it works, how to make money with it, how to make the most money with it, as well as other reasons why this business is very useful. I'm going to break this business down and make it as easy as possible to understand so that you can make an informed decision on whether you want to buy this business and if you choose to buy it how to make the most money possible so if you enjoy this video a thumbs up would be awesome subscribe for more stuff like this let's go first things first location 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 how do we buy one of these and where should we do it to buy a hangar open up your internet whether that's on a laptop in an office or on your phone go down to internet money and services and click on maze bank foreclosures go up to the top right here filter it by hangers so you can only see all the hangers available and you've got a handful of hangers to choose from you've got two down here in lsia the main airport in los santos these two are the cheapest two hangers in the game now on the surface this might seem like a good location because you know it's close to the city but these are actually the hangars that you should avoid no instead you want to go up to fort zancudo that's right the military base and buy one of the hangars in here i recommend getting the cheapest one here because the location is basically the same this is useful for a few reasons the first is this is going to allow you to access fort zancudo whenever you want you are no longer going to get a wanted level when you drive in or fly over fort zancudo this will make it a bit easier to get around the map as well as make it easier to go and steal a laser jet if you want to do that and the other reason is because it's in a much more central location of the map. When you're doing missions related to the hangar, some of the activities could spawn at the very top of the map, some could spawn at the very bottom, and some will spawn everywhere in between. Being in the middle of the map with Fort Zancudo makes it a lot easier to get to these locations, as opposed to buying a hangar on the bottom of the map, and then having to fly all the way up to the top of the map to do a mission, and then all the way back down to the bottom to bring the supplies back to your hangar. So yes, overall, even though it's a bit more expensive, it's much better to buy a hangar here instead of LSIA. Before we get into the business of the hangar itself, the smugglers run missions, it's important to know that the hangar is a very important business to buy. The main reason for this is because, yes, it literally does act like a hangar. This is the only place in GTA Online where you can store aircraft. So if you plan on going and buying different helicopters, let's say the Akula, the Savage, or if you plan on buying different planes, the only place you can store them is here. If you don't have a hangar, you can't buy these vehicles. So for that reason alone, for a lot of players, the hangar is going to be a must-buy property. When you actually choose to buy your hangar, there's a few things you'll want to know. Most of these upgrades are all cosmetic, but there's two that you might want to invest. In. The first one is a sleeping quarters. This means you can change your spawn location to the hangar and spawn here whenever you like. That's pretty useful. The other one you might want is the workshop. This is the only way that you'll be able to customize your aircraft. Whether it's add a new paint job, increase the speed, or add new weapons to them, you are going to need this workshop to do it, and it's just over $1 million. Okay, let's talk about the business. How do you make money with it? How do you use it? The central hub for this business is gonna be in the hangar office. Go up the stairs here, go into the laptop that's sitting on the desk, and we could start making some money. Now, the overall concept of this business is very, very simple. You log onto your laptop, click source, and pick a supply to source. Once you do this, this is going to set you out on a mission where you have to go to a certain location, complete an activity possibly, and then steal the supplies and bring it back to your hangar. Once the supplies are in your hangar, you can then sell them for a profit. So if you've ever used the cargo warehouse or even the vehicle warehouse in GTA Online, the overall concept is very, very similar. So how much money do these materials get you? Well, before 2022, Selling one product would only get you $10,000. Now, at the end of 2022, Rockstar Games buffed this business, tripling the payout. 
So now, every single material will get you $30,000 per crate. That brings the hangar a lot more in line with the amount of money you can make from the rest of the businesses in the game. So on the surface, it seems like you can just source whatever you want, right? If they all pay you $30,000 per item, you can just source whatever you want and make the same amount of money. Well, no, that's not exactly correct. Gathering certain products in bunches will actually give you bonus money. If that seems confusing, let me explain and I'll try and make this as clear as possible. The first two we will use as an example is counterfeit goods and tobacco. Each of these crates, of course, will be worth $30,000 per crate. However, if you get five of either of these, that will give you a 5% payout increase. You can see what this looks like on your screen now. It says it's gonna give me a 5% bonus if I sell that stock together. What's interesting is that is gonna increase by 5% for each five crates I get after that. So for example, if I have 10 crates, that's gonna give me a 10% bonus. If I have 25 crates of counterfeit goods, that's gonna give me a 25 bonus. And if I have 50 crates, which is the maximum amount of crates you can hold in your hangar at once, that's gonna give me a 50% payout increase. The next few crates that are grouped together are jewelry, art, and animal goods. Instead of increasing the value every five crates, for these crates, the value increases for each 10 that you have. Once you have 10 of these crates, you're gonna get a 12% bonus, and that's gonna increase just like the other ones each 10 crates you get. If you have a full warehouse of 50 crates with either of these three goods, that bonus is going to be 60%. The final three, medical supplies, chemicals, and narcotics, well, they're gonna give you a bonus for every 25 crates. If you have 25 of these, that'll give you a 35% bonus, and if you have 50 of these, that will give you a 70% bonus. Okay, if that's still a bit too confusing, I'm gonna put this chart on the screen now that should make it a lot easier to understand. Big shout out to the original creator of this on the GTA subreddit, and hopefully that makes things a bit more clear. So, how much money is this actually going to make you? Let's have a look. This is the amount of money that is gonna make you taking those bonuses into consideration if you choose to sell these products as a group. And when you look at the difference before and after this latest buff to this business, that is a massive difference where it would only get you $850,000 before, now selling 50 crates of narcotics, for example, will make you $2.55 million. That's a fair bit. You'll also need to note, like it says here, Ron is going to take a 2.5% cut of anything you sell, but honestly, that's not that big of a deal. Let's talk about actually selling this. How does the process work and how many crates should you have before you sell? If you choose to sell anywhere between one and 10 crates, that's most likely only going to spawn one sale vehicle. That means it's going to be a lot easier to complete solo. There is an off chance that you're going to get a Havoc cell mission, and that one's going to spawn three vehicles, but that's pretty unlikely. If you're selling between 11 and 25 crates, most times this is going to spawn you two sale vehicles, with the occasional possibility that you get the Havoc cell mission, and that one's going to spawn six vehicles. But again, that's pretty unlikely and unlucky. If you're selling over 26 crates, most likely you're gonna get three sale vehicles with the off chance that you're gonna get the Havoc one, which will give you eight, but also with the possibility that you'll get the Skylift cell mission where it's only gonna give you two sale vehicles. So if you only ever want one sale vehicle, you should sell with 10 or less crates. And if you're gonna be selling it at 10 crates, the products that are gonna get you the most money are jewelry, art, and animal goods. Because like we saw in the table, if you have 10 of these crates, that's gonna give you a 12% bonus. Outside of that, the only tips I have for these sale missions are just be careful. During these missions, it's okay to land the vehicle and take out some of the enemies if you need to. Keep in mind that these are aircraft. They're not ground vehicles that can just take a million bullets from enemies without blowing up. If your plane or helicopter takes too much damage, it will no longer be able to fly and you're gonna fail that mission and lose your product. One final thing I wanna mention is the cooldown that's gonna appear once you source crates. 
this table here will help make it a lot easier to understand. After you source a specific crate, let's just take counterfeit goods for example, once you deliver this back to your hangar, there's going to be a one minute cooldown until you can source that crate again, or if you're playing solo, it's going to be a two minute cooldown. You can look at this graphic on screen now to determine all the cooldowns for whatever you choose to supply. So if you see a cooldown and not sure why it's that long, this is the reason. I'll also link this entire graphic in the description below so you can come back to it whenever you want and see how to make the most money. As for additional tips for this business, of course, doing this with friends is going to speed up the process. If you're doing these solo, you're only ever going to get one crate, whereas if you're doing it with other people, additional crates will spawn, meaning you're going to get more money faster. During all of your source missions as well, the game is going to spawn an aircraft somewhere for you to use if you want to, but a lot of the time it's going to be more effective to call in your own vehicle. Whether that's a Sparrow, that's one of the fastest helicopters in the game, whether it's an Oppressor Mark II, just because it's really Really easy to use or whether you choose to steal a laser jet from Fort Zancudo, all of these will be more time effective than using the vehicle the game gives you. Most source missions should take you, I would say roughly 10 minutes, really anywhere between 5 and 15 minutes per mission, but let's just say 10 minutes as a median point. If you do 6 of these missions an hour and you get 6 crates, that's going to be roughly $180,000. So you can expect to make about $180,000 per hour with the hangar. And we'll wrap it up there. I really hope this video helped you out. Personally, I was the type of person who ignored this business completely, but only now I've started diving in and having a bit more fun with these missions. So I hope you can do that too. If this video helped you out, a thumbs up would be awesome. Sub for more stuff like this. Stay safe and I will see you in the next video. Peace. Since I was in the seventh grade, seventh grade. Had my first kid, I was only 17. 17 Always a provider for my pack like Wolverines go, 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 go. But you won't find me on the mountaintop Need no calculator, I